Okay, something I've been thinking about and often come across in topics with friends is this whole idea of seeing into the future, predicting the future, knowing your future. And my question I always think is like, hmm, what I want to know, is it good to know? Should I know? And I don't know, I think I go back and forth. I'm not 100% clear as to what really is the right answer. And I think I kind of sit in the middle. Um, we've explored spirituality in my podcast with some of my guests before. Um, and it's been an interesting experience because I don't feel like I'm not, like, like I just said, I'm not closed off to the idea, but it's not something I incorporate in my everyday life or everyday thinking or daily routine. Um, but I am fascinated and intrigued when I meet people who are, you know, either like swear by it or live by it quite a lot or like know a lot about astrology. I'm always so amazed. Um, I have friends who are like so well versed in, oh, this is, this is my sign, this is my house, my moon, blah, blah, my sun, all this. Okay, I'm totally butchering that, but they know like all of their attributes of their astrology that defines them and it's so interesting and I can't tell you how many times I've downloaded an astrology app because a friend has told me to and then they've told me all about like what all the things mean but none of it like I don't absorb any of it because not because I'm not interested I just genuinely cannot remember all that information and then I end up deleting the app because they send you way too many notifications but anyway I have very much so been exposed to it do I believe in like horoscopes, tarot cards, like more of like the daily incorporation of astrology into your life? Hmm, not really, but also yes. I don't think it should be what defines you as a person. I think I have a very like strong stance on that or, or something that you rely on to define yourself or make sense of your reality. But I do think it's and it's like interesting enough that it informs you and others' perspective, but doesn't really. It's not like the be all and end all of who you are. I um, had in an earlier podcast my guest Kelly, who how she kind of incorporated spirituality into her daily life was she used these. They weren't tarot cards, but they were like I can't remember what we called them. But there were cards that essentially had like an animal on them or whatever. But it offered like she used it as a path to offer ex a perspective to whatever was on her mind or like a subject matter. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. And I liked the use of it in that style because I think she was very clear and had a definitive line of like where it plays a role in her life versus where it doesn't. Um, I guess I feel slightly uneasy when I when people are super invested into horoscopes um, as such a big defining factor of their lives because I do, I mean, I guess it can go a few different ways. One, it's like, I feel like it's depending too much on something that you don't really even know the source of truth of where this content's coming from. Someone's just sitting on the computer, writing up all these little horoscopes, might be AI generated, most likely is, and then you're like, kind of defining so much of your personality and who you are by that second I think where it can go wonky is like when people use their horoscopes or their star sign or their like whatever all their astrology astrolog astrologic is that a word astrologic I want to just make it a word astrologic 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 wow anyway their astrology information and attributes to as like a, an escape or as like a cop out for things. Like, oh, I'm a, I honestly don't even know what like all the star signs actually represent, but like, I don't know if you're a Capricorn, I don't actually know like what that means about your personality. I, I really don't. But like, say like someone's like, oh, I'm a Capricorn. That's just expected of my character. And I'm like, is it? Or are you just being a little bit unreliable in this situation? Not that I know if a Capricorn is unreliable, but like, you know, blaming certain things like, oh, I'm really late, but that's just in my star sign. That's my character. I'm like, is it, or are you just not taking accountability for who you are as a person and improving yourself? Because I think in this day and age, wow, I sound really old, but I'm not 30 yet. 
Um, I feel in this day and age, people love, like people are allergic to account accountability. I mean, like genuinely allergic to accountability and ownership of anything. Um, no one wants to like put their name on something and be like, oh, I did this or yep, I'm responsible for X, Y, Z. Everyone's more just like, oh, you know, it was my star sign, my star sign. It's just in me. Like there's nothing I can do. If I'm late, I'm late. Like if I, if I make an error on something, it's just, it's just my personality. Like, no, no, that is not, <laughs> that is not a, something that you can use to fall back on to escape responsibility from things. So that's a strong no from me. Um, but yeah, I guess the third kind of arm of it is, I do think that, I mean, I think it's quite clear in life generally that people want something bigger than themselves to believe in. And that's obvious in religion. That's obvious in things like astrology um, or whatever sort of structure that you, in your mind, believe in. I think for me, I also agree. Like, I think that there is a higher power, not that it's any specific religion or person. I just think there's like something out there in the ether that is a knows like my path, knows who I am, has seen it all. And I don't necessarily want to meet that person or know what they have to say. But I do think that there's something out there kind of just like moving the little chess pieces in my life. Um, because honestly, when I think really hard about it sometimes and I'm like, it's so wild that like, we are just on earth. We're just in a little sphere in the, in the galaxy and outside of it, there's like all these other planets. We don't even know like what's outside of that. Honestly, when I think really hard about that, my mind, I get like a headache slash I get this really weird sense of like, of a lack of purpose-ness. Like I feel less significant which I think is kind of a good thing because it makes you, in one way, it kind of reminds me like, oh, you know, don't take life so seriously. You're just like one little blip in this whole galaxy. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it makes you think on the other side, depending on what mood you're in, like, oh my God, I'm so insignificant. Why do I even bother? Um, so I think it just depends on like how I'm feeling on the day. But usually I'm a bit more of a glass half full gal. But it can really throw me off sometimes. So that's why I think when I think about things like that, I'm like, oh, I'm such a small blip. Like there has to be something bigger than me out there, which there is for sure. Um, and so I think there's just no denying that things have happened for a reason, whether it's science, whether it's, oh, I don't know, art, whatever. There are things that have happened and we can't explain it. So, yeah, I feel that horoscopes, et cetera, are not a bad thing, but are definitely something to be managed. Um, and I think, yeah, just as long as it doesn't define you so much as a person and you're, like, having a healthy relationship and still living your life, that's super important. On the other side of that, like, there is this – um, okay, taking a quick break. I bought some pistachio butter. Um, if you guys listen to the podcast with my gal Kelly, she really liked like a pistachio butter. I have kind of realized that I went wrong. I read the packet and it's actually pistachio spread, which means that I think it's, I think the ingredients mean that it's not really like one, it's not really healthy, but two, um, it's a little bit more on the spread side of things versus the butter, which means it has more like ingredients. So it has sugar, vegetable oils and fats um, and then pistachios, milk powder, whey milk powder. So yeah, I feel like it's going to be more of a spread and doesn't, won't taste like so, um, not so specifically, it won't, it won't taste so like um, obviously pistachio. I think it's going to be like a mixture of flavors. But anyway, I brought this brand. It's Fofo, F-O-F-O, -F -O, and it's a, oh, it's a pistachio spread. Um, but I 
I personally love eating my nut butters with dates. Usually I'll eat peanut butter with dates, um, medjool dates. I love dates. They're so good, so juicy, and they're great energy for you, like healthy energy. But they also got a high sugar content, so sometimes it makes me break out. So I used to eat a lot of dates, and now I eat like two every two days. Anyway, so I put the nut butter on the date. In this situation, this is definitely looks like a spread. I know, let's give it a try. Mmm. That's really sweet. I feel like it tastes like white chocolate, and I'm not the biggest white chocolate fan. I feel like I want to call this a fail, but not because of the the, the products are well, the product is kind of the issue, but it's more me that's made the error. So I'm not going to count pistachio butter out yet. I'm just going to call this one very sweet. I don't think I can eat my second date. I might have to get the pistachio off of it. It's just too sweet. Asian auntie and me just loves things that are not too sweet. Anyway, we'll save that one for later. I don't want to waste a date. Okay. Just the PSA. Do not give up on peanut pistachio butter yet, guys. That is not a fair reflection. I will go out and get some better pistachio butter. Okay, moving on to the second thing is fortune tellers. So fortune tellers and, and like, yeah, just fortune tellers in general, that whole umbrella for me is different because it's not, I don't, it's not horoscopes, but it's like a, one specific person. Like you have this source of truth and you know, you might not know them, but at least it's coming from this one person. And I feel like it requires more skill than astrology slash potentially more reliable, but also that's very subjective and based on whether or not you trust that person. But anyway, I think the one big question is, do you want to know your future? Personally, no. I, as I was saying before, I fundamentally believe that there is a higher power of sorts that already knows your, my path and my future. So I have no interest in meeting this person or engaging with them. And I have no interest in knowing what my future is because I feel like that just ruins the fun of life. I sometimes feel like it's better to not be so curious about how everything's going to plan out, uh, play out, sorry, because, hello, I think part of the essence of life is not knowing, going on that journey and making decisions and seeing where it takes you. If I was to know my, my path, I honestly think I would just, it would just cripple me as a person personally, because I feel like I would be like, oh, I know X, Y, Z is going to happen. I know this, I know that you'd be looking for things. And it, I think for me, it would definitely make me like miss out on certain cues or opportunities or people because, um, you'd have this, I'd had this constant battle between, oh, should I just, I already know my future and things are happening and things are happening in that way. Should I just follow that path or should I try and make some different decisions to change my future? So I think my battle would be like, oh, can I even change my future? Is it possible? Um, because I do think in life there is fate and like I have gotten to where I am now. And maybe, maybe that is because my future, like that was all predetermined for me and that's how I got there. And I think I'm making decisions, but I'm not really. But I'd rather feel like I think that I'm making the decisions and I'm fully in control of my life as opposed to knowing and then living by that like set path. Um, yeah, so I, I do have this view, in my, in my mind, I have this vision of like every decision I've made has, would have gone a different way. And that's like the whole, like the whole multiverse idea, right? It's like every decision you make plays out in a different way. And it means there's like millions of you on different paths. And I do truly believe that. I think like in another world, there is me who stayed with my ex-boyfriend. There is me who stayed in Melbourne. There is me who, I don't know, was better at sport at a younger age. It became a pro something, something, something. But um, I just kind of accept that that is a possibility. But I, I choose to live and exist in my current state and not know my future. Like my friend put out a good example and she was talking about, oh, if I'm dating a guy and my mom goes to a fortune teller and finds out, eh, he's good for you, he's not good for you, whatever. 
she was like, either way, I don't want to know the answer because I think both are a negative impact on her because either one, if it's like, oh, he's bad for you, then maybe you're like, okay, I will go and break up with him. And then maybe you break up with him too early and then you sit the whole, there the whole time. You're like, what if, what if it was different? Was that fortune teller really correct? And then the other side is like, what if they say he's good for you and then you date him and then it ends up not being good for you. Then you, you'd feel like you've wasted time, etc. So I just think it's a very, I honestly have like hats off to people who do go to fortune tellers because I think it takes a, a great level of courage. I'm too scared to go because I'm, I just don't want to know that. I don't want to ruin my like own personal reality and the world that I live in. I'm just happy in my space. But kudos to people who can do it. I'm proud of you. You go out there and you do that. I do have a cool story for you, however. Well, it's like cool and very interesting and kind of eerie. But um, talking about fortune tellers. So my mum, last year we were back in Melbourne and her um, one of her siblings gave her this like book and it was written by or prepared by her father, my mom's, my granddad. I've never met her grandparents. I don't know why I just shared that, but anyway. Um, that's why, I guess it's because that's why I refer to her as my mom's dad because I didn't really have a grandfather and know them personally like that. Anyway, that was a tangent. Um, so my mom's dad had this like book made for every child and it was, um, he got their bazza done, uh, which is like their fortune, like, uh, like their, but it's kind of like, like your path in life. Um, and it's all written in Chinese. And then, yeah, like details on like their birth and blah, 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 all this stuff. Anyway, so my mom is now in her like late 60s. So we were like, ooh, let's read it because she had only just come across this. Um, and we didn't really know what it was because none of us can read traditional Chinese, but Alex's mom can. And so she was reading it. And yeah, it turns out it was my mom's bazza. And I kind of thought this was interesting because this is like your fortune has been, you've, someone's gone to a fortune teller, written out your whole fortune from when you were a baby, literally from when my mom was a baby. And then no one's read it, except probably my granddad. And then you read it later in life and you kind of see like, ooh, did things happen? Did it not? I feel like that's a kind of a cool way to go about fortune telling where you don't actually read it until later in life. And you kind of just see like, ooh, was it accurate or not? Anyway, this Bata for my mom was wild because it was like very accurate, like a lot of detailed things. Well, it wasn't like overly detailed, but it was detailed enough that like it was calling out specific moments and they actually happened. And that's where I was like, kind of like, whoa, this is cool, but eerie, but also like mind blowing. And so I think those sort of situations and those scenarios that pop up make me believe in the whole Bata and like, fortune teller fortune teller space because I do think I mean I've watched that Tyler show where like there was like that celebrity guy who like goes to people's houses and he's like he can like speak to their dead like their close family members or loved ones that have passed away um and then they know like what's happened in their lives without him to anyway I do think that there are specific people who do have this connection to this like I don't know how they do it, but they have a connection and they know what's going on. Um, and so I do believe in that, I think, but that's why I fear going to them because I actually think they could be really potentially really accurate, but it really depends on who you go to, which I think is the, the, the thing that makes me uncomfortable. Anyway. Anyway, so that's why I say, it's not something that I like strongly believe in. I don't like reject the idea at all, but I think it just really depends. It really depends on who you go to, the energy you have at the time, what you're there seeking, your intention, et cetera. It all depends on that. Um, yeah, but my perfect scenario is that I get my like fortune read and then I don't read it until I'm like 70 or 80. And I'm like, ooh, how interesting. That would be a really cool experience. Maybe I should go do that. I'm like not too old. I feel like things could definitely, a lot of, a lot of things are still going to happen in my life. Um, so, but yeah, anyway, I thought it was pretty cool that my mom had that done when she was a baby. Um, 
all in all, closing out this pod, I do not think it's great to rely on horoscopes, etc., to dictate your life. Um, and I think I would prefer not to know my fortune generally because I just would want to, I just, I just like want to focus on living in the moment, being present. And I just know that for me, it would just weigh so heavy on my mind as to what like is going to happen. So I'm going to opt out of that one. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any really cool stories about astrology or like fortune telling, please share. I'm so intrigued. I love to hear these stories. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the pod. See you in the next one. Bye.